Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, Allah tells us to seek help, to seek help through prayer and patience. In fact, the order of it, he says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Verse number 45 of Surah Al-Baqarah. He says, seek help, seek assistance through patience and prayer. Now, people might wonder why the order of the Qur'an we may know, we may not know. Some of the scholars have said patience is required in order to pray. You need to have a lot of restraint and forbearance, a lot of strength in order to pray. You need to have willpower in order to pray. All of that is, is in the Arabic term sabr. So Allah says, Ista'inu bi sabr wa salah. You need to bear patience. Patience upon calamity, patience upon hardship, patience upon difficulty, negativity, hopelessness, whatever else it may be. You need to throw the hopelessness out, but you need to bear patience, a beautiful patience. You need to know that goodness is coming. And in the interim, you need to continue praying. You need to continue with your connection with Allah. Istahinu bi sabri wa salah. You continue and seek help through patience and prayer. When you pray, you call out to Allah, you cry to Allah. Those warm tears come about with a lot of hope, a lot of comfort. That is Allah. He has given us the ingredients of achieving solution to our matters the way He wants, not the way we want. Sometimes you think something is really good for you. Allah says, mm, I know this is not good for you. So I will not give it to you because I love you. And you're still crying. So ask Allah to help you. Be patient. Pray a lot. Pray the five daily prayers and even beyond. Call out to Allah. Supplicate to Him. Call out to Allah. Supplicate to Him. Ask Allah, Oh Allah, if this is good for me, let it happen. If it's not good for me, let it not happen. And then be pleased. When something is blocked by Allah, and you try because you believe it's good for you and you keep trying, there comes a point when it becomes totally blocked. That's the time you walk away and you thank Allah and you're still content because Allah says, because you were so busy trying to get what you wanted, not knowing it was bad for you, so out of our mercy we blocked it from you, you could not see so many of the other blessings we were throwing at you. Sometimes people are depressed because of one thing they don't have, but they don't realize they have a million other things that they need to be so, so grateful for. This is why Allah says, Ista'inu bi sabr wa salah. Seek the help of Allah through patience and prayer. When you pray to Allah, Allah will guide you to the right path. He only guides those who are trying to achieve that guidance. Allah says, Wa innaha la kabiratun. It is very difficult to pray five times a day, except for those who have khushu'ah, those who are dedicated to Allah. You know, if you want to pray five times a day, you're going to have to be very dedicated. Allah says it's very difficult. It's not easy to pray five times a day. But Allah says what you achieve from that is priceless. Absolutely priceless. Especially, subhanAllah, the contentment in this world and the success of the hereafter. That is something on another level. So my brothers and sisters, remember that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter makes mention of the story of Musa alayhi salam and the Pharaoh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he actually counts the favors that he bestowed upon the people of Moses, the people of Musa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them in verse number 49, Do you remember when we saved you from the Pharaoh? The Pharaoh used to harm you. He used to hurt you. He used to persecute you. Do you remember we saved you from him? So this verse has in it a lot of healing because to think about the difficulty we were in at some point and how Allah took us out of it does two things for you. Number one is it helps you appreciate the favor of Allah. Number two is it helps you to know that the difficulty you may be in right now will also come to pass. Subhanallah. So on one hand, yes, I appreciate the favor of Allah because I'm thinking of how He's favored me. And secondly is I've got a new problem. And you know what? The same way He took me out of that problem, He is going to take me out of this one. 
Subhanallah. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. And a lot of the times people wonder when someone is murdered, when someone loses their lives uh, for something that they were not even to blame. You know, suddenly there's a car crash and someone passes away. May Allah give them all paradise. Remember one thing. When Allah has taken the life of this world away, He hasn't really taken the person completely away. It's just the soul that's separated from the body temporarily taken to a certain place, uh, uh, separated from its loved ones and will very soon be reunited with the loved ones. It's something you need to know. So I am just separated for a few minutes. It's like someone's gone off to sleep and I can't wake them up right now, but I wake them up just now or we will, you know, both be awake in a different form of life just now. Don't lose hope. If you've lost a loved one, bear patience. Think of the favors of Allah upon you and think of the fact that you're going to meet them soon. The best gift you can do to your loved one who's passed away is to seek forgiveness for that particular loved one. That's the best thing. Because if Allah forgives them, you don't need anything else. You don't need anything else. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, one of the biggest gifts you can have is a child that you leave behind who's going to pray for you. Oh Allah, forgive my father. Oh Allah, forgive my mother. Keep repeating because in repetition, there is a lot of love of Allah. Allah operates differently from human beings. If you have a human being, you ask them once, you ask them twice, you ask them three times, they get irritated. When you have Allah, you ask him once, twice. The more you ask him, the happier he becomes. The more he sees your desperation, the greater the chances of your dua or supplication being answered. Subhanallah. It works opposite because Allah has a different type of mercy, which is way beyond the mercy of any human being. If you were to ask your mother for a favor, once, twice, thrice, and you look at your mother and you're crying to your mother, your mother would probably soften up even if she was harsh towards you at some point. Unlike a person whom you don't know and you're asking them to give you something, the more you repeat it, the more irritated they become. Allah's mercy is beyond the mercy of the most merciful of mothers. That's amazing. So Allah tells you, Keep asking, don't worry, it's beneficial for you. So someone might say, well, what's the point of repeating it when Allah hears it the first time? Allah says, I heard it the first time and I kept on elevating your status and giving you bonus upon bonus for every time you called out to me with the same thing repeated again and again because I gave you contentment, I gave you this happiness, I gave you that goodness, I gave you as a result of a prayer that you were making to me for something else altogether. So it's never a loss. Keep on calling out to Allah. Keep on seeking His forgiveness, truly and sincerely. Not just for yourselves, but even for your parents and those who've passed on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So Allah continues to count uh, uh, the favors of Allah upon the people, the children of Yaqub alayhi salam or the people at the time of Musa alayhi salam. And Allah says, there was a great test. Allah says, in those things, there was a great test from Allah for you. Great test. Yani from your Lord, there was a great test. So Allah tested them with a huge test. Imagine what was the huge test. The huge test was this Pharaoh was coming and executing innocent children. Allah says that was a very big test. Imagine if Allah is calling it Bala'un Azim. You know, it's a big test. I can only imagine what hardship and difficulty they must have gone through watching their children being murdered by the Pharaoh. Today we have a similar problem where upon the globe there are people who are engaging in murder and killing that is completely completely unjustified and subhanallah there is no justification for such thing and they're just going around creating chaos and when imagine people being raped and murdered and uh, made homeless and so much more and you watch your family being done the same too Allah says oh that's bala'un azim that's a massive test from Allah but don't blame Allah for it because it's the doing of man it's not the doing of Allah. Man is the one who creates chaos on earth. That's what the Quran says. All the chaos that you see at land and at sea, you need to know that it's because of what people have done. The people are doing it. You can't have someone who murdered a child and then you say, why did Allah allow it? When Allah gave you the power and told you expressly to use it to do good and you did bad, you can never blame Allah for that. 
You blame the human and that's why that person's going to be punished by Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be thankful. May Allah give us the power to overcome the challenges. May He grant us hope and healing. May He open our doors. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us every reason to smile. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. My beloved brothers and sisters, just do two things. That is, ask Allah with patience and prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coincides these two things in the Quran when it comes to asking him. He says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَةِ Seek help through patience and prayer. And patience comes first. So it's really important to have patience when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah never gets tired listening your dua. And Allah never gets angry listening to your plea. Raise your hand and ask Allah whatever you need. From your shoelace to your biggest of dreams. Allah can fulfill all of your dreams. And Allah will give you. Allah wants to give you. Allah loves when you make dua. But Allah wants to see your sincerity and consistency. Ask Allah consistently. Whenever Allah gives you something, don't start disobeying Him. Don't start displeasing Allah with the blessings He has given you. Rather, use His blessings to please Him. Use His blessings to reach out to others. Use His blessings to help others and you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give barakah in your life Allah will make you happy Allah will give you a good health Allah will give you a good family Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of sustenance for you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you to do good deeds may Allah forgive our shortcomings may Allah answer all of our duas may Allah grant us whatever he seems good for us And may Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus Al-A'la.